everybody, it's Hayden from Connect. Welcome to today's video. So I want to talk you through um, anomaly detection and outlier detection in Power BI and, and how to use a really powerful tool um, called interquartile ranges uh, within your data. As you can see on screen here, I've got a website that's uh, briefly explaining what an interquartile range is. It's taking the range of your data set um, and it's looking at the median of your data. Um, so quarter one is the median of the first half of the data, quarter three is the second half, and your quarter two is your median of the entire data set. Before we begin on screen right now, you'll see uh, some timings. We're gonna carry on the discussion about outliers and what they are, provide a deep dive into some real world examples, and then we're gonna jump into the DAX development. So if that's what you wanna see, jump forward to that position. Applying calculations to this will help you identify in your data um, upper ranges and lower ranges of potential issues. So it started to look at the spread of your data and the distribution of your data and where you start to see maybe numbers, values that you maybe not want to include. Really useful during the modeling phase of your analytical process. So when you're trying to design what your model looks like, you're trying to interpret the data, see how you want to present it to stakeholders. But also through the communication phase of your analytics where you're presenting to your stakeholders, you're publishing the reports, you can explain to them what data's in, what data's out, where the challenges are with that data. You know, you know, really, really strong aspect of a good data analyst is to be able to explain to his business what the data means, where the challenges are. Um, I've shared some of the videos on, on data profiling uh, and I'll, I'll include those at the end of this video for you to look at as well. So this is really important. So taking this into quartile range, if we jump over here, so, so this website's telling you how to take that range. So once you've created your quartile one, quartile three, IQR, um, you can then create a lower bound and an upper bound of your data. And you can use that information there to specify what's in and what's out. So you can either remove that data from your calculations or you can include that data, but make note of it. Um, and I'll give you an example um, of, of where I've seen this. So here we have some analytical work that I was doing for my company. You'll have to excuse the way it looks. It's, it's not the final presentation. This was purely work that was undertaken to present back to them the challenges that we see with the, the quality of the data and the impact that the quality of the data is having on the analytics. So as you can see here, we've got, let's focus on these boxes here where we have a, a plan cost um, of three and a half thousand euros. When you take out the when you take out the outliers, so we used anomaly detection to remove the outliers, the average plan cost reduces to 1,000, um, what, just over a thousand euros per shipment. Um, here, actual cost, you can see that the data is very different. Um, weight, uh, where we're shipping volume, the average with all the data was 5,600 kilos. Uh, with, with the outliers removed, it was just under 4,000 kilos. So you can see the impact that bad data is having on um, on the information and when data analysts um, are just presenting the averages you know you're, you're going to make incorrect decisions and you're going to have challenges with how you interpret your model so it's really important to identify the outliers. What's happened in this process here is that we've identified that, that when loading in the rates at the very beginning um, there's the incorrect exchange rate applied um, sorry the incorrect currency code applied so when we do the currency conversion um, it's generating an incorrect cost and therefore we've identified a program that's going to fix data. So again, the analytical insights is generating value into the business by understanding the problems with the data and how we can fix them and where those problems lie. So let's jump into how we create these. So, so this is a this is a, a report that I've created. And I'll go through how I've created it. I've got everything preset here to talk you through so you don't have to watch me type. Um, using interquartile range. This is call center data. Um, if you saw the previous video I did on histograms, uh, which how we generate the dispersion of the data, we can almost see the, the, the bell curve of where most of the data sits. You can also use that as a good way to visualize where your potential outliers are. Using the interquartile range is more of a scientific method. So taking the, um, we're going to use this days open to close. So the number of days a ticket was raised and how many days, sorry, the, the number of days from a ticket opening to when it was closed. So as you can see, minimum value is zero. There's a lot of work closed in the day it was opened. Maximum value, we've got 605 days, so nearly two years to have an incident closed. 
So looking at the interquartile range the, that we've talked about, the median um, IQR, I've got two calculations here to show you um, uh, that the median calculation in Power BI is exactly the same as the interquartile calculation. Um, IQR, and then using the, the, the range calculation of what the range should be. So what we've defined here is a, a lower limit of minus 12. Now, based on the fact my minimum data is zero, um, um, we can just go with zero, but, but we can use this minus 12 if we want to. The You can see here where we've got an upper gate um, using the interquartile range of 20. So it's looked at the data and it said of that median range and that spread of data, you, typically your data falls into to 20. So let's see how that looks. Look at the dashboard again. So we've got this average open to close value here of 12.6 days. If you're looking to um, if you're looking to use this information to maybe identify based on the number of tickets, how many resources you need, if you're trying to convince your business that you need more or less resource or put a business case together, yeah, you're going to want to get accurate data. The challenge with some of these here is that they may be um, mistakes. So one can really throw this out. So there's one of 605 which will really skew your average. So if you look here, if we look at a calculation of this data here, Q3 upper outline gate, if we apply that to the calculation, our average open to close time is 3.54. Including your outliers, your average open to close time is 12.6. So let's move, jump into how do we create the interquartile range. So there's a great function in Power BI. So I'm going to, I've created these here of IQR1. So interquartile range 1 is percentile.inc. And then you put in the value. And then I want it at 25%. So the first quartile range. So if we jump back to this website here, you can see it's the 25% of your your median data. This is 75%, you've got your 50% range. So using, using that method, we've got the interquartile range 2, which is at 50%, and percentile inc, 75% is IQR3. Now then to generate the upper gate and lower gate range, you simply apply your, so, so you need the interquartile range here. So once you've calculated your interquartile range here, you have, um, which is your quartile three minus quartile one, that generates your IQR, which is eight in this, this example of that distribution of data. And then to multi, to create your lower gate and your upper gates here, your lower quartile gate is your interquartile range one, yeah, plus 1.5, uh, sorry, minus 1.5, because we go under the range, because it's the lower quartile, multiplied by the interquartile range, which is your IQR3 minus IQR1, this value here. The upper gate is taking your interquartile 3, so you're 75% of the data. You're adding 1.5 this time, and then you're multiplying by your interquartile range, which is generating these gates here to help you create your data. So that's that's a great function, an easy function in Power BI um, to create your interquartile ranges. It's a scientific way of looking at, it's a, sorry, a scientific or statistical way of looking at your data and trying to find anomalies. So thanks for thanks for watching. I hope this was useful. Um, go and apply it. G give it a go um, using you know the calculate method. So that's the video. If you liked it, please do hit the like button. Please do hit subscribe. Um, uh, I'll put, share some um, links at the end of this video to the how to create histograms and how to do the table profiling so you can have a look at those as well. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.